Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And one of the realities of using a tent regularly and frequently is you're going to have to do maintenance on it. It's not going to last forever. You're going to have to repair things on your tent just like you have to repair things on your home. One of the things you're going to find is eventually your tent will do this. The seam seal tape is going to start to let go. Exposure to UV light out in the daytime, the heat in the summertime, and the constant flexing of that material slowly takes its toll. Even the age, even if you buy a tent and just store it away, time alone will cause that tape to eventually let go. And you're going to have to do something about it. Now you can buy tape. I've looked for it online. When I can find it, it's not available. And when it is available, sometimes can get a little pricey. You can also get these little tubes of sealer and you can reseal your seams but that gets expensive if you've got like a four person tent or larger a bunch of those little tubes those start to add up when they're 10 12 15 dollars a piece i'm not sure exactly what they are but the quality ones it seems like that's what they were the last time i checked however there is a way that you can make your own seam sealer at home with a simple trip to the hardware store so let's get started before we even begin to work on the tent or the rain fly let's assemble the materials and the tools that we're going to need we will need some sort of white silicon sealer. You do not want to use caulking. Don't buy anything that's clear. You want to get clear silicone sealer. You do not want caulking. Caulking will not work for this. It's not flexible enough. You also need some mineral spirits. And the reason you have both of these is you're going to combine these in a small container. And I'm just going to use this plastic container, just leftover food container, because this is going to be disposable. Something else you will need are some disposable foam brushes. Something to mix these two items with. I use craft sticks. If you want to use uh, a paint stick or a piece of scrap wood, whatever you want to use, you can certainly use that as well. It also helps if you can find yourself a small syringe. These are inexpensive. You can find these online. And I find that these make a much neater job than what you will find in a lot of other videos that show you how to do it this way. And I'll get to that in a bit. You will also need either some paper towels or a lot of rags because this is going to get messy. And because it's going to get messy, you'll also want some nitrile or mechanics gloves, exam gloves, something to put on your hands because you're going to get this stuff on your hands and fingers. Now that we have everything assembled and we're ready to proceed, let's start working on the actual tent material itself, whether this is the body or the fly. Before you do anything, before you even start to apply the material that you've got, we're going to have to remove this old seam seal tape. Sometimes you get lucky and it peels right off in pieces like this. That's great. Other times it may stick here but not here and you're going to have to do a lot of picking to get that material off of there. So some, like I say, sometimes you get lucky and it pulls off just super easy and other times it breaks apart on you and you've got to sit here and take a pair of tweezers and pick and pick and pick and that's very very tedious. So this is something that you probably want to do off season like in the winter time when you're doing your normal maintenance on your on your gear and take the time to completely remove all of this seam seal tape because it's going to do stuff like this it's going to break apart on you it's going to crack it's going to be brittle it could be difficult to pull off a heat gun can help or hair dryer don't use a torch or anything like that but once you've got it all removed it's time to move on to mixing your materials and starting to apply it now it's time to start mixing our DIY seam sealer. I just bought a hand tube like this. If you have a caulking gun and want to use a caulking tube, you certainly can. But for most people, a tube like this is going to be just fine and it will have more than enough to do most tents. So let's get started mixing this stuff up. Just take some of this sealer and pour it into the container. And now we're going to take just a little bit of the mineral spirits, not a whole lot, just a little bit. And we're going to mix that up. If you didn't get the right material, if you actually got a caulking material, probably what you'll end up with is a great big blob of stuff inside of this mineral spirits. And I see I need to get a little bit more sealant. 
And the reason you're using the mineral spirits is to thin it down to make it easier to work with, plus it will delay the time it takes for that sealer to cure. It gives you more time. Now, if you have somebody helping you, that's great. One of you can work with mixing up the sealer and the other one can work with getting everything on the tent itself to actually applying it. But I still have this a little bit too soupy. That is about the consistency I'm looking for. It's a little bit lumpy though, so I'm going to continue to stir it. Okay, I'm going to try to pull it into this syringe by pulling back, but I'm not holding out much hope that it's going to do that. It kind of is, but not very well. So we're going to have to resort to the illegal method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load this from the back side. And this is where having two people can help. One person can work with making the sealer and the other can work on applying it. So if you order some of these syringes, order several, so you can go back and forth and eventually they're going to clog up, they're going to be unusable. And this is what we're looking to do, is we want absolute control over applying this to the seam on the tent. So let's bring the tent over and get started on that. For this demonstration, I have removed the seam tape from here to here. This is only for demonstration purposes because you don't want me to do the whole tent. It gets boring because once you see this much of it, you pretty much got it. Now, some people will just simply take their brush and dip it in there and start swabbing it on. You could do that, but you end up with a very amateuristic looking result. You want something nice and neat and straight and professional looking. And that's why I use these syringes because they allow me to precisely control exactly how much seam seal goes down every inch of the way. Just spread a little bit out right in the middle. And again, it helps if somebody is assisting you by loading these up. Then you simply take your brush and start working it back and forth, centering your brush on that seam. If you need to pitch your tent to do this, that's fine. If not, and you can work on it on a table like this, even better. It'll take a little bit of time to determine how much of this DIY sealer you need to place to get a good, even seam. But once you get used to it, it starts to go pretty quick. And it, no time at all, you will be making your own DIY seam sealer right at home. Like I say, this is something that you can do in the winter time in your maintenance of your tent. And you can see already I've got that much done. How long should you let it cure? Well, that's kind of up for debate because I see nothing on this package that tells me how long to let it cure. And if it did, I'd probably have to double that because I'm thinning it down with the mineral spirits. So I would say whatever time it takes to, for this to cure, double it. Actually, let it go as long as possible. That way you know it's going to be totally cured. If your seal here in the container starts to set up, you can always put a little bit more mineral spirits in it, thin it out a little bit, and keep going. When you get into doing something like this, it really helps to have two people. One person working with the mineral spirits and the sealant and mixing them together and keeping one of these syringes filled up and another person concentrating on actually applying the seam seal. This way you aren't jumping back and forth, you miss a spot, you make a mistake, you've got a great big huge mess and sometimes your tent doesn't even look very good when you're all done. Having two people really, really helps. So I'm just gonna let this set for a while and we'll see what it's like when it's ready to put on the tent. And in just a few short hours, this 
fly is ready to go back on the tent, fully waterproofed at the seams. This way you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money to save your tent from being tossed in the trash simply because it was too expensive to fix with all those expensive commercially available products. So this is Backpack Hack coming at you with this trail tip. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.